Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bronco Garage. Today we're gonna to talk about wheel bearings and anything and everything you ever wanted to know about them. So we just tore down the front end on this 1973 Ford Bronco behind me. And now we're gonna start talking about wheel bearings, how to install them, how to diagnose them. And we're gonna go ahead and start installing the monster disc brake kit on it. Now, this is all components that are gonna be inside that kit. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to pack the bearings. Then I'm gonna show you how to correctly install all of this. And then of course, all the torque sequences. Now this is a tapered roller bearing right here. And this little guy right here needs to have grease inside and out of every single roller to correctly be packed before it's installed. Also, keep in mind, when you're buying a new rotor and hub assembly, the race is already pre-installed, so all you gotta do is pack bearings. First thing I'll show you is a couple different types of grease that you can use. Uh, obviously, you've got the Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, Molly Fortified, all-purpose wheel bearing grease. Probably the best stuff to stick with. I do, however, do like my red and tacky from Lucas, and that is an upgrade option that uh, I use. So that one's red, or the other one's more like black. Uh, there are also two different ways to pack wheel bearings. This being probably the easiest way, where you actually pull this piece out down below, load all the grease from inside of here into the tub, put the bottom piece back in, and then you literally put your wheel bearing on top of it, and then push down on this and this literally loads the bearing full of grease for you. I'm gonna show you the more conventional method that people use that don't have this. All right, so I'm gonna put this down on my palm just like this. All right, so you wanna take your wheel bearing and the bigger opening you wanna to face towards the grease. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna push down like this and I'm gonna keep going until I see the grease start oozing out the other side. See how it's oozing out the other side right there? Just keep going, working your way around. The last things I like to do is just kind of make sure that there's grease on the inside and out. And that's a packed bearing. That thing is ready to install. So I started with the larger bearing. The reason why is because the moment that it's done and packed, I just simply set it into the race on the back side of the hub and rotor assembly and that one's ready for the seal to be applied. Before I go to the seal, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that last bearing and repeat the process. All right, so you've got your bearings packed. Now, the next thing from there is you're going to start assembling all the pieces onto your spindle. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your spindle and you're gonna have a needle bearing right here that actually presses down inside like that. I like to use a nice big hammer like this and then a bearing race or seal uh, setting tool like this. All right. So next, you're gonna grab your hub and turn it over, and then with your greased bearing, you're gonna slide the larger ones into the back, and then you're gonna take your seal and you're gonna knock the seal in place. Be very careful not to put that in crooked. You can use a hammer, but I prefer to use something flat that covers the whole surface like this, and then just make sure it all installs real nice and even. Now this, keep in mind, is already attached to your knuckle. Then the hub slides over it, and I'm gonna simulate it like this right here. Now, I'm actually gonna take the, this spindle back out and show you how all this looks without the hub installed. You've got the seal right here that goes around the base of the spindle, and then you've got your bearing right here, and this is gonna slide into position down on the spindle like that. Then you've got your next bearing, this is your outer bearing, which normally goes on right here into the hub. That one sits there like this. Now, once you've got those in place, everything's there, it's time to put the last three components on, which is gonna be two spindle nuts and a spindle washer. The first one, it's very critical, is the one that has that little nub. That little guy right there, you see him poking out? You wanna make sure that that's first and make sure it's facing out. So it's gonna go on the spindle first like this. Now you're gonna to torque that down using your spindle socket provided by James Duff. You're gonna go ahead and torque that inner spindle nut down to 50 foot-pounds. 
Then you're gonna spin the tire and seat the bearings. Then torque it to 50 again. Do that two or three times, and then once you feel like you've got all of that seated and nice and ready to go, you're then gonna back it back off a quarter of a turn. So one thing I wanna make very clear is that when you're tightening this nut down, it's actually pushing this bearing down and forcing these two bearings together. And that is what we call seating the bearings. After you've done that, you're going to use your washer. Now the washer has a little tang in it and that tang has to locate on the groove that is on the spindle. Now you notice how the washer is sitting up. That's because of that little nub on your inside spindle nut. You're gonna to wanna to back the spindle nut off just a little bit until that washer falls into place on the nub on your inner spindle nut. This is not an easy process. I mean, you've basically gotta be working inside of this hub right here. It's a very small and tight area. You're gonna probably end up using a flashlight. You're gonna make very tiny adjustments until you get it just right. Now remember, that does require removing the washer, grabbing your spindle nut socket, and making those adjustments, and then putting the washer back on. Like I said, you don't wanna back it off too much because you're just trying to get it to fit into the nub that's close to the hole inside the washer. You back it off too much, then all that work you did to seat the bearings all goes away. Last and final step here before you put your hub lockers back on is you've got this second outer nut and this it doesn't have a nub on it. It's completely smooth on the back and the front. So you're going to go ahead and slide that third piece on there and this is the one that requires the most torque. You're going to go back and use your spindle nut socket and you're going to torque this down to 100 foot pounds. So if you can't do that, you want to make sure you find someone that can and I highly recommend not using an impact gun. You want to make sure that it is absolutely critical that you get the torque just right. All right, so I just got done showing you guys how to put the wheel bearing together and how all the internals work and install. Well, the big thing that I want to convey is how the tire should be on this whole assembly. And what I mean by that is inside here are your wheel bearings. And you know, the inside one is about here and then your outside one is about here. So really the face of where your wheel mounts to the hub is the center of your wheel bearing assembly. And that's where you want most of your weight is the center between the two. And so you have to be really careful when you buy a tire tire and wheel combination, you don't want the wheel to be sticking so far out that it's off center to your wheel bearings. It will prematurely wear them out. You want the wheel bearings to be split between this center tread right here. So you basically want the center of your tread and the flange or mating surface of your wheel to be as close to center so they don't wear out prematurely. Typically when you buy your wheel tire combo or you upgrade as you go, the bigger the tire, the more room you need for it to turn left and right. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll buy wheel spacers to pull the wheel out further so it doesn't hit the radius arm or other components in front of the vehicle. Just remember when you do that, you're also reducing the life of your wheel bearings because you're adding more stress to them. Have the tire so it free spins like this. And then you're gonna grab the bottom of the tire and the top and you're gonna pull out on the bottom and then push in on the top and then reverse that process and do a rocking motion, just a back and forth. What you're looking for is to see this tire move in and out excessively. You know, a little bit of movement, a little bit of play is pretty normal, but if you hear a clunk or if you just have a lot of like, almost like a wobble, then you've got a problem. And there's a really good chance that your wheel bearings need to be replaced and possibly even your spindle, but it could also be your ball joints. The reason this whole assembly here is really nice and firm and not rocking around is because just got done installing the Monster Disc Brake Kit by James Duff. You should check that video out and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment below. I wanna hear what you guys are working on. Thanks for joining the Bronco Garage. We'll catch you next time.